Hello family, welcome to a beautiful broadcast this morning. Glory to God. We thank God for making it possible for us to meet today. Wherever you are watching or joining us from, this is the love service, Sunday love service. I'm bringing it to you from the Christ Amazing Love family. I believe this morning God has a word for you. God want to touch somebody. God wants to speak to somebody. God wants to align us to his purpose. So if you join us, kindly share the video. Kindly make sure that your brothers and sisters also get the opportunity to watch and to be part of this service. God bless you. Now, this is how we start. Wherever you are, begin to thank God. You know, appreciate God. You know, give glory to God wherever you are right now. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for a beautiful morning and a beautiful life he has given to you. I appreciate his holy name right now. Give God the glory. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Libro, Hosata, Fasakala, Basanta. We worship you. We extol you. Just not like you, our Lord and our God. Shabarasuta, Fala, Misunta, Yagabasura, Basha. Estore the Lord right now, wherever you are watching us, joining us, worship the Lord. This is Sunday love service, Sunday morning love service. It's just for a short time. Just take time with us and begin to worship the Lord. He is the great and the mighty God. He is the beautiful King. There's not like our Lord. There's not like our God, our Father. He's the great and the mighty God. Shabra suke libro sandaraba suke libada. We worship you. We extol you. Raka so talamashian da 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 ba. Kuande 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 kuala miza ramason de kelele mosha. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Libra Santa kayada ba. Inda raba suke lele ma suka la la ba. Thank you for the week. I want you to thank God for the beautiful week he gave you. Thank God for a beautiful week he gave you. This is the beginning of a new week. Thank God for a beautiful week he has given you. In the name of Jesus, thank God for a beautiful week he has given you. He has made it possible for you to be here and giving you many chances and opportunities to serve him. Give God the glory. Give God the honor. Extol his holy name. Extol his holy name. Thank him. For a beautiful time that he has allowed you the bible says in all things we should give glory to god this is the will of god concerning us in christ jesus we thank you we extol you abba sucra sunto sheve lebra santa kile mondasha oh glory to your holy name we extol you father we thank you we extol you oh we worship you we worship you we worship you we worship you that's not like you lord that's not like you, Lord. 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 Magadava sagadava suke de balaba. Di grado sun de grede basi kayan de lebe. That's not like our God. We have told you. This is your glory. This is your, your blessing. This is how far you've brought us. We love you. We celebrate you, Father. We thank you. We thank you for all the happenings. We thank you for all the things that you have made us go through. We thank you for the lessons. We thank you for the strength. Thank you for the grace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, before we go on, I want you to take this time to pray for your family right now pray and thank god for them right now thank god for everyone in your family you have been praying for them for some to be saved you have been praying for them for the glory of god to be revealed in them pray and thank god for their lives thank god for your father your mother your wife your children everyone that you are linked with Thank God for them in the name of Jesus. Thank God for them. Magadaba, su gadaba gada, i gadabu sekele mada, shi agadaba, gre gadaba su gede badaba, shi andebe debe si kada dadaba, i gababa laba su ke. Father, we thank you. Oh, we extol your holy name. Reze gede badaba. 
kuandelele mosi kala la brasu kala la mashabala ba iye gede ba se gede bra ba 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 shoke de 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 iye de 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 she handa da 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 ba iye gada da 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 bo si kaya da da ba Father, we thank you. I thank you for every one uh, of the family, the Christ amazing love family. For your greatness, your goodness, your love, your mercy, uh, that is available and great towards us. You have been a great, 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 great help to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saving those who are not saved. Thank you for revealing yourself to them. Thank you for making um, the gospel um, come clear and come alive to them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, um, this morning we are continuing our message on the church. So, wherever you are joining us from, we are talking about the church, and I've already kept the definition there. It's going to bless you. Let's stay tuned. I believe these are things that God wants us to know. These are important truths God wants the church to realize and to walk in. And so if you are happening to be part of the service this morning, just stay tuned and let um, the word of God come to you in a powerful way. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So let's start. We have been talking about the church and we said the church is a spiritual family the church is a spiritual family now this morning our focus will be on the second line the church is a spiritual family with christ in the center as king then the second line says who love god love others and make disciples who make disciples Yes, the church is a spiritual family with Christ in the center as king who love God, love others, and make disciples who make disciples. Glory to God. Let me take that definition again. The church is a spiritual family with Jesus as the center as king who love God and love others and make disciples who also make disciples glory to god now this morning we are talking about who love god yes the church is a spiritual family who love god who love god and love others so i'm talking about love love for god when we talk about love for god what do we mean how are you supposed to love god as a christian how are you supposed to walk with god what is the posture god wants you to have in love when it comes to him glory to god now we are going to start with a beautiful word from the master in matthew jesus was once asked a question on what is the greatest command in the law in matthew chapter 22 a lawyer asked jesus this question matthew 22 verse 35 he says then one of them which was a lawyer asked him a question tempting him and saying master which is the greatest command in the law matthew 22 verse 36 let me put it on the screen for you so that you see it. Matthew 22, verse 36. I'm putting it on the screen for you so that you can see it. Master, which is the great command in the law? Look at the answer Jesus gave. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, 
and with all your soul and with all your mind this is the first and great command or great commandment hallelujah you need to know this is from the old testament this is the command god gave his people in the law when you look at verse 35 because this is a question that was asked by a lawyer then one of them verse 35 which was a lawyer asked him a question tempting him saying master which is the greatest or great command in the law so this question is the great command in the law and the answer jesus gave thou shalt love the lord thy god thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind glory to god this was from the law now does it change now not really it doesn't really change what god wants from us as his children is total devotion total commitment total dedication we are to love god with all our heart all our soul all our mind all our strength that is how god wants us to love why so let me show you the implication in matthew chapter 6 jesus christ gave us the implication what it means when you don't devote your whole self to god when you don't love god with all of your heart the reason we are to love with all our heart matthew chapter 20 matthew chapter 6 verse 24 i'm going to put it on the screen for you once again see it matthew 6 24 the lord jesus said no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other ye cannot serve god and mammon take note no man he didn't say some men no man can serve two masters have you seen it no man no man can serve two masters for either he will hurt the one and love the other or else you hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon now that means that you cannot serve god unless you totally dedicate yourself to god no man can serve two masters he will love the one and hate the other so if it is not total dedication what it means is that <laughs> You will not really love God. You, whatever thing you love first or you cherish or you uphold first is going to be superimposed on God. Then you are going to despise God. You are not going to really walk with God as he wants you to walk. And you will not be able to take other instructions from him to love other people. So you can't actually serve God without total dedication. Yes, if you really want to work with God, if you really want to please God, it is not 50-50. No, it is not 80-100 or 80-20. You don't give God 80 and give something 20. That is not the dedication God wants from you. The church is a spiritual family with Jesus in the middle or center as Cain who love God. And what God wants from us as commitment, love, as charity is total dedication and commitment. He doesn't expect even 90-10. He doesn't want your commitment to be you give your 10% to something and you give God 90. He wants total dedication. Hallelujah. 
Amen and amen. He wants total dedication. Glory to God. God wants total dedication. Amen and amen. Let me show you something in Revelation. The same truth is depicted in the letter to the churches. And we see that in Revelation chapter 3. A very powerful truth. And it's saddening because many of the people in the church who are supposed to know it and apply it to themselves are rather applying it to unbelievers. But this was the Lord talking to his church in Revelation chapter 3. Look at what he says. Verse 20. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. I knock. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You see, he wants to come in. He wants you to allow him total freedom into your heart. Unfortunately, many pastors say, I stand at the door and knock. It's referring to unbelievers. So, when we go for crusade, that is our main scripture. We say, come. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. He wants to come into your life. Yes. But then, this is the letter to the church of Laodicea. Or the church in Laodicea. He says, I am standing at the door and knocking. You are supposed to be totally dedicated. Totally committed. Is it so that we the church, you... Who is born again? Who is supposed to be committed to the Lord? You are believing in Jesus Christ, but then you have set him aside. You have kept him outside. He doesn't have role, total control over your life. He doesn't have um, a say in some of the things you do. If it is so, then it is about time you totally surrender everything to him. It's about time you totally open up to him. It's about time you totally give him the chance to rule and to reign in your life. He wants total dedication. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to be allowed chance to determine what you do with your life. Yes, that is what it means to give God your heart. He is now the controller of your life. That is what God wants. If not, other things creeping in will not let you be able to live as God wants you to live. Child of God. Other things creeping in will make life complicated. It will make it difficult for you to hear and to hear to God. Oh yes. You see, there are many people right now in the world, some in different fields, they know what God wants them to do, but because they are not ready to open up to God, they are not ready to yield to love God. It has become a problem. They are not able to follow the call of God. They are not able to do what God wants them to do. But you must yield. Yes, you must yield. You know why? Let me show you something. We were lost. We didn't have any sense of God. But God sent his son to die for us. God loved us when we were sinners. Let me show it to you. When we didn't have any sense of loving God, that was when he loved us. Hallelujah. And that is why we love God. We love him because he loved us. Let me show it to you. First First John 19. We love God because He first loved us. We love Him because He first loved us. We love Him because He first loved us. Now, let me take you to Romans chapter 5. You will see something there. When we didn't deserve His love, 
That was when he loved us. And that's why we, we have to love him. Oh, yes. The one who had your very good at heart and did everything to get you in line with him. Why can't you love him? Yes. The plans, the future, the things he's got for you needs your total dedication. Romans 5. See whether anybody can love you this way to merit your total commitment, your total love. We love him because he first loved us. He did for us what first no one could do for us. Romans 5. Look at that. Verse 8. Romans 5, verse 8. Let's start from verse 7. He says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet, per adventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. What this means is this. If you are a, a very righteous person, and you have an issue and somebody is supposed to die for you so that you will go scot free how many people will vouch to die for you scarcely you understand it doesn't really happen you will not to die for you nobody wants to really die even if you're a good person but if you're a good man maybe you have somebody come and say i will die for this person because Ah, when I needed school fees, it was this man. When I needed this, it was this person. When I needed this, it was this person. He did that for me. He did that for me. So, I must, I must die. I must die for him. I want to die for him. But then, we, we were not good people. Verse 9. Verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. As for us, as for our case, we were still in sin. We were deep in sin. We didn't know God. We didn't have any sense for God. But he, <laughs> he saw our wretchedness and came through for us. The one who died for you when you didn't have any good in your life. Is there any cause why you can't love him? This is why we love him. Yes, he's the one who stood for us when we were sinners. He died for us when we were yet sinners. God commanded us that in a while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Glory to God. Yes. Yes. You see, so this is the reason why we love God. Because for what he did for us in our wretchedness, loving him is the least thing we can do. He's not forcing us. But then the love he has shown us is enough to convince everyone of us to totally dedicate ourselves to him, knowing that he has a very good at heart. Glory to God. Yes, that's why Christians love God. A spiritual family who love God. A spiritual family first, they have Jesus in the center as king. Who love God? Now, after we receive Jesus and we dedicate ourselves to God and we love God, God tells us to love one another. Oh, yes. God tells us to love one another. In the old, they were supposed to love their neighbors as themselves. But then, it is not so in the New Testament. Yes. In the old, it was said, love your neighbor as yourself. But love your neighbor as yourself is no longer applicable for the child of God. It has even gotten better. When I say that it is no longer applicable, some people are like, hey, are you saying that uh, that thing is past? How can the word of God pass? No. What you need to understand is this. The Bible is a book of covenant. You have the old covenant and the new covenant. The old covenant is written to the Jewish people, to Israel. But then it, is, it has very important lessons in there for us to learn. 
What actually belongs to us is the New Testament, which God enacted with his blood. Or Jesus died to make for us. Hallelujah. Let me show you. Let's go to the Bible. How are you supposed to love? Is it love your neighbor as yourself? Matthew chapter 19. Let's go quickly to see whether we are supposed to love our neighbors as ourselves or, or how. I don't need to take you to the Old Testament to show you that one. You already know it. So let me take you to the New Testament to show you how we are supposed to love. See the commandment God gives us. John 15 verse 12. This is my commandment. It is for you. That you love one another as I have loved you. Period. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. You see, if you wanted to say love your neighbor as yourself, mm -hmm. he would have told us, love your neighbor as yourself. But he says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Somebody will say, okay, how do you know this is different from love your neighbor as yourself? Somebody will ask, how do you know this is different from love your neighbor as yourself? Let's go to John 13, verse 34. You see that in John 13, 34, the Lord Jesus Christ says something there. You see, he says, a new commandment I give unto you. Have you seen it? So this one is different from love your neighbor as yourself. God, that one is not new. In fact, it's old. It's part of the Old Testament. It's now old. A new commandment I give unto you. Look at it. This is the second time. And remember, in Scripture, a truth is established when it has two or more witnesses. And here we have more. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. As I have loved you. You see, the operational word here is, as I have loved you. As I have loved you. As I have loved you. You understand? So, the way the Christian is supposed to love, a spiritual family with Jesus in the center as king, who love God and love others. The way the Christian is supposed to love is to love as I have loved you, and I here is Jesus Christ. So how did Jesus love us? Let's continue to John 15, 13. Look at what Jesus said about how he loves us. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Oh. Now let's look at it critically. Greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. Let me ask you a question here. Who laid down his life for his friends? Is there anybody in the world who ever did that? Jesus Christ. John 1.29 says he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He laid down his life for his friends. He says, nobody takes my life from me. I lay it down and I take it back. Jesus is the one who lays down his life for his friends. And he said, this is greater love, that no man lay down his life for his friends. So the way Jesus loved was to lay down his life for his friends, and this is greater love. That is the same way he wants us to love. That means we should no longer live for ourselves. We should no longer love ourselves. Self-love is against the Christ love. You see, if Jesus Christ loved himself first, do you think he would go to the cross? The politician who is stealing is because he's loving himself first. He's thinking if he comes out of power, you people, you will not care for him. So he's talking and stealing the money so that he will preserve his future. That's not a Christian way. If you're a child of God in a business, in an organization, never take part in such sin. Rather, surrender your life. Rather, Live your life to help uplift the group, 
make a difference there in love love others don't be part of the group that gossip and fight backbite don't be part of the group that pull people down don't be part of the group that is sabotaging the system be the influence that is making the country move forward be a lawyer with a difference be a teacher with a difference don't be a teacher who will go to school and stay on the phone all the time that he is in school be a teacher with a difference a teacher who takes all his lessons as he is supposed to take them prompt regular that is what you are supposed that's love love for others yes yes oh yes that is it that is how he wants us to love now I'm going to have another section where I'm going to show you the, the details of how we love people. Truth, you need to know about the love of God because many of God's children don't know the Christ love, what it means to love. There are certain truths you need to know. And it was um, captured in my first book, Understanding the Love of God. How you are supposed to love as God wants us to love. How? It is captured that you see it. Yes. The truth about it. So in our next broadcast, if God permits and the time is out, you get to know it and you stay tuned, you're going you're gonna to love it. Hallelujah. But then he wants us to love as he loved us. Glory to God. Let's see it again. John 15, 13. Greater love us no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. Oh, yes. Yes. That means you are supposed to give your life for others. You are supposed to live to, to better people. You are supposed to live to help people. Oh, yes. Don't be selfish. Don't be a cheat. Don't be dishonest. Don't be destroying the things that um, God has allowed you to come in contact with. Let anybody who meets you, let anybody who comes into your life, be blessed for coming into your life. Let them be blessed for meeting you. Let them be blessed for God letting you come into your life. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are laying down your life for your friends. That is the church. That's what we are supposed to do. If we walk in love, the whole world will understand who we are. The whole world will be blessed by who we are. The whole world who, 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 who want to come to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank God. I believe you are blessed. If you are blessed, like the video, share the video, comment, let me know how you are blessed. Amen and amen. Glory to God. So this is just a short Sunday message for you about the church. I didn't intend that this should be long. Actually, it's our first main broadcast as um this pandemic took over the world and i'm planning by the grace of god to come your way every sunday morning between the hours of seven o'clock and eight o'clock with the word of god sometimes we may come earlier but then however it goes we are going to come your way with the word of god so stay tuned lock it down and get ready to be blessed in many ways like this my name is Apostle Gideon. If you have a question, comment. Leave it there. I'll read your comments and I'll come back later to answer them and to help you. If you have a topic you want me to treat, you would want me to handle, if you have a question you want me to answer, don't hesitate to leave it in the question space. I will come by the grace of God and duly answer it. God bless you. Have another service. I will see you. God willing tomorrow. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.